Hey guys, and welcome back to Oxygen Not Included, Clay's amazing space colony simulator extraordinaire. My name is Twitchy, and we have been on the LZ Alpha for about 580 cycles now. But yesterday, I did an experiment with this rock. I'm going to call it this rock, this this uh, this space station here, that uh, I feel everybody should partake in. A uh, an experiment that really showed me the fragilities in my base. I made a save, I put the game onto the highest speed, and I went for a bath. I just wandered off and let the game do whatever it was it needed to do for about five cycles. By the time I got back, uh, I, uh, I had noticed that everything had gone badly, badly wrong, but there were a few things in particular that I thing went worse than the others. One of the first things that went wrong was this ethanol had overheated and I was like, oh no, that is a very, very bad sign. It filled all this area up with ethanol, but more importantly, the cooling had shut down and that was bad. Another problem that, oh, I've just set something when I meant to uh, to use it. Another problem that we had was over here. This was the steam uh, area. You can see down below, these two liquid thermosensors, uh, they sometimes do not receive power when these aqua tuners have already eaten all the power. This means sometimes Sometimes these little blobs of water can end up getting super super chilled turning to ice and breaking stuff that is a bit of a problem um, one that needs to be addressed thankfully this is one that we can address really quickly just by uh, copying out a few items here Okay, so a very quick redesign has put the liquid shunt valves here onto their own battery loop. So that should mean that they are always powered, uh, ripped apart all the wires connecting them up to the aqua tuner, and gave this aqua tuner its own power line. So hopefully they should share those out a lot, lot better. Another problem is over here, up this way, we've got a bit of a water problem. I was dumping water straight out of here, and as you can see, that has gone bad. We have got ourselves into a situation where everything has backed up to quite an extent, and this means that we can't empty water out of this system which means this water sieve over here has completely jammed up this means that the liquid pipe and the carbon skimmer aren't moving uh, equipment uh, aren't moving the waste products out which then means this gas vent has overpressured the carbon dioxide has backed up and the natural gas generators have shut down that is not what we need but it's a relatively easy fix actually if we just come along and snip this here, just to make that separate from the others, we can see that actually what we need to do is to connect it up to this line. And that should be relatively easy if I can kind of push it in and through all these lines like so. And then we can just come up and connect there. That should solve that particular issue as well, turning the power back on. Though talking of power, I also re realized there was a big problem here. Uh, there's no way for power to float back into this system to start the... Uh, the pumps up or anything like that and as you can see there is no power in the transformers so we're gonna have to do a little something to sort that out as well but it's a nice easy one of just kind of connecting across there pressing x and destroying all of that of course if you do it without the overlay on things actually get set to destroy and finally we have this little power plant down here now i did a little bit of maths three uh, four times 800 is 3200 so uh trying to output through this one little power transformer down here it's not gonna cut it in fact what we need is at least three of them now of course you did just hear me say 3200 so we could really do with having more than that but if we look down here there is a power storage unit to restart the whole system so i'm hoping that that is where that gets stored uh, and that leaves us with with just one little goal of putting this entire system up here just made just copied it out in triplicate really oh too many times of pressing escape gets you into the menu did you guys know that i knew that already so i don't know why it was a bit of a surprise to me and then finally, those three transformers should be able to share out all the power that is coming out of here and not constrict it so much. Okay, the big one my hydrogen generator or my hydrogen uh, tamer here uh, big problems are such that the temperature is just too hot I mean like look at this go going through here far far too hot so the first thing we need to do is try and bring down the temperatures of these if above 100 now I know the steam won't actually turn on if it's a, a below 250 uh, 125 sorry but we're, we're just we're just gonna say that we're just gonna say it. in fact you want to turn on if you're above well, let's let's say 140. Just, just a completely arbitrary number. This one's going to be 150, and the next one's going to be 200. This should hopefully now turn cooling on across the majority of these and bring the temperature down on at least a few of these spikes going down. And then once the temperature has got down enough, we can deal with this little radiator over there. The reason I haven't dealt with the radiator straight away is because uh, to do that, I need to 
make little dead zones in it to, to drain some stuff out. And the moment you do that, I'm fairly sure the ethanol will stop moving and pick up the 130 degree heat here. I'm not about that. One thing, one other thing I'm not about is all the water in here. Let's try and get rid of it. So there's actual water down below and there's salt water here. So I'm hoping that once the water drips through, it'll create some sort of like liquid lock underneath. There is a little bit of chlorine we would have to worry about, but I think we'll be fine with that. And my main aim is to get all the steam that's in here to come along and condense on this pipe to then drop down uh, and, and get out of here. You know, just, just, just get on out of here. Oh, there's a hole in the tube there. What's that about? Try, oh, so, someone's working on the liquid pipe somewhere. <laughs> Okay, one of the unfortunate side effects of the overhaul over this side is the fact that these pipes didn't get any cooling from up above for a while. And it's mainly because there wasn't cooling coming back through the system to cool all this lot down. Uh, so now we need to try and get in there. And that's always interesting. Literally always leads to some oxygen being led, uh, moved in there. So we're probably going to want to put a little bit of that down. Uh, we, we will have it as a high priority, but of course we're going to want to have these as high priorities. And I want to have these as absolute panic inducing mess makers all right uh, literally the moment the blocks were down mimi was running on in there to fix everything this should work out pretty well for us i'm, I'm hoping there's a bunch of materials on the side there that she can use to fix everything so it should be one two go around do the jobs uh, not doing the others i would i'd really like you to do the others ah uh, this one needs a steel delivery that's a little more unfortunate you know what, as long as Miss gets out there without too much more incident, we're probably good here. Single blob of oxygen that did, didn't, did make it in there, didn't make it in there. All right, beautiful. Okay, that, that's cool, that's cool. We just got that one left up there from last time. That, that's, that's fine. Okay, so now that we've got the cooling on the way, uh, underway in there, I want to connect this across this way and then use this little snip tool to go up there. And hopefully this will now empty everything out without it getting too hot. I just want everything to, to, to drain. As you can see, it is really gaining temperature quite quick, but that's because the hydro hydrogen is like 100 degrees up here. But as soon as we get down to a single flow again, bam, it should now be nice and simple. Well-regulated single stream flow. Love it. Okay, we're gonna do the same again over here now that we've done it once. Okay, so that's worked out pretty well. And then we just do that. All right, nice. Is this gonna overheat? Nah, not a chance, not a chance. Of course, the reason for all the jerkiness in the water simulation there, water simulation there, is of course because of all this bypass being put into place. We've nearly got back on top of the gases in the base, though we do still have a little bit of a gas over for the exosuit problem. Okay, so the water now flows. The ga the carbon skimmer now now skims. There we go. We've got gas vent pu pushing on out of there. It would be nice to be able to get that little blob of water away from there. Can we uh, just do that? I've got a feeling that's not going to help at all because obviously this one is kind of like just dropping straight down on top of it. But I'm not sure if there's a, an extra thing up top. I suppose we could have a look here. It's hard to call it. It's hard to call it. But we've definitely got carbon dioxide coming out of here at quite a rate as well. So that has now made this all operational. Beautiful. Beautiful. Everything seems to be beautiful recently. I hope you don't mind that. I mean, who 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 would mind beauty? Hopefully, with more power available as it's needed, we can keep a high constant load going and not have those ridiculous spikes that take us up and over the load of the, the wire. I'm hoping. I'm hoping anyway. Okay, one of the problems we got over here is this liquid reservoir is totally overfilling. So we need to try and deal with that. And I'm going to deal with that by siphoning some of the liquids off. Nice and simple, right? All right, it's looking good. If we can get the water to drain down below here when this liquid shutoff valve turns off, then I will consider this a great success. But at the moment, I think we're only keeping up with the uh, the recycled flow, if you will. But of course, all we can really do is just wait and see what happens. So yes, it has been a great success. As you can see, all the water has come out here, but we have a bigger problem than that. You can see that I'm already destructing, uh, deconstructing, sorry, the tiles at the doorway. That's because I want to get rid of them. I want to put down a thermo sensor over here. I want to get some automatic automation wire and I want to pull that across here. Okay, beautiful. I also want to set these all at super high priority. Yes, that's right. We need to get this done. Also, has this all been set down here? I want to grab some more space for sweep orders because well, we've run out of room. Look, 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 at, look at what's going on over here. 
The reason that I wanted to put this uh, this thermo sensor over here is because this is getting quite warm. Uh, at the moment, we're at 207, but it's climbing. It's climbing constantly. And the real problem is we have got a dormant uh, steam volcano here. So the steam is just slowly going to be cooling down and down. But more importantly, it means that we're going to stop getting water come out of here at some point, which means these could get too, too hot. So we need to ask someone to come along and put a control system in so that we know what's going on. I'm also going to put down another one of these just just to share the temperature. So we get more accurate reading, I think. I think it makes more accurate reading. Okay, if below three, no, let's let's say 250, <laughs> let's make sure that it stays nice and cool. If it stays below 250, go ahead and turn on. That That's all we're doing there. Beautiful, beautiful. We want to then grab these insulated tiles, move them up there, press F4 and see how much oxygen has got into the system. I mean, there is a little bit, but I don't think I'm that bothered right now. Okay, I think I've got one last thing I want to do before I declare this done for the moment. I want to get an automation signal coming off of this liquid reservoir and have a, a liquid shunt, shut off of a valve coming down over here as you can see i've already got a little bit of power running into somewhere i don't know whether it's the right spot of course it's not the right spot why would it be the right spot uh and then this should as long as i can do one of these now control this whole system for us if the if the hot water tank is full start letting some of the cold water out so that we're not sending it back up and through to fill up the hot tank it's the logic anyway so i kept on having this weird situation where the duplicants would realize that their suits were running out of oxygen and then come up and just put the, the, their suit in the first uh, dock that they came across thus leading to people getting stuck inside here with no oxygen being delivered to their suits and then they'd have to run away so what I've ended up doing is putting down these uh, pneumatic doors with the same settings as what comes before them so that nobody can even get into this section unless they can get the atmospheric suit from it it should hopefully end up with less people just getting like lost in here like cubic should be able to now make it out of here, right? Yeah, 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 cool. Alright, wonderful. Because this tank is over half full, well, but over 80% full, it's sending a not signal out. Uh, I don't even know why. But that then gets... Uh changed via this not gate into a go signal and as you can see in the background here half the water that we've got is now being dumped into our main water system over here which is still disappointingly empty oh, another suffocating why no this was not supposed to happen anymore you're not even you're not even supposed to be in there how did you get in there the cipher can't access this how did he get here mad frank doesn't have a suit why can't what Okay, I have questions. There are people idle inside, but there are suits laying around. There's four people, four suits, one of which has got air inside it, but people can't go. I think I'm going to have to wait till the night time and then try and figure out who's carrying suits inside and what we can do about that. Okay, night time's called. I've got someone starving, but they're inside, so I don't, I don't know what we're going to be able to do about that. Who ends up wearing suits inside? This is the question. Where's everybody up here? That's another question. Where are their suits? Mad Frank, Luna, and Dr. Captain... Well, Dr. Captain Subs is inside already. I'm fairly sure Mad Frank is as well. And so is Luna. So why aren't there suits up here? How did this happen? No, I apologize. Dr. Captain Subs is supposed to be here. But as you can see, he's not wearing a suit. So let's move you over. You can't move over there. What if we just unequip your suit? Watch this. Bam. And then let's watch you go somewhere. Okay, that's cool. Miss uh, Forest, in fact, also needs to come over here and take your suit off. We'll do that as well. Okay, that is that all unaccounted suits now? I think it might be. I think it might be. Let's ask for these to be delivered. And that should then be everyone good? Maybe? Okay, deliveries have now been made. Does this now mean everybody can get out? I, I hope so. I mean, there's three suits here that aren't being used. There's one here that is absolutely full that's not being used. What's going on with that? Oh, it was Miss Align. She was sleeping. No worries. Okay, it's been a couple of cycles. As mainly I've been trying to empty out all the steam from this area. It's a bit of a fruitless task, if I'm to be honest with you. And I kind of feel like we need to move this mesh tile forward, maybe one or two. Like, may maybe right into the middle here would probably be a winner. In fact, let's, let's do that. Let's do that now. I'm not going to set it up as a high priority. We're just going to let it go. What I have been doing as a high priority, though, is coming down here, getting this bottle emptier, which is set to both salt water and normal water, hitting go and waiting for people to come along and make the deliveries. Now, I'm not going to 
going to do that now because I've been listening to alarms for long enough. Uh, but I also have another problem that I want to address. The problem is down here, as you can see, this mechanical airlock in the middle is not snapping shut. And that is because we do not have enough liquid in the system. As you can see, it will only trigger if we go above a thousand, uh, sorry, a hundred kilograms. And we're only at 95.2. So how do we fix this? Well, of course, we fix it by coming down here and hooking these things up. I think that wouldn't be too much of a problem. We've got a vacuum down here, though, and we've got micrograms of sour gas on this side. So I'm a little bit worried. I'm a little bit worried, but let's give it a go. Let's let's try and do it. If I press F6, you can see that we've got uh, we've got sorry liquids hooked up and pretty much ready to go. What the first thing I need to do is hook uh, unhook that uh, and be cool like this. Is that all I want to do? I mean, it's very tempting to stick up uh, stick a a shuttle valve here so that I could uh, control it from the outside, but I don't think that's how we're going to do it. We're going to do this by bam. All right, nice. Next question I have is anybody allowed in here? No, they're not. So we're going to do that like that as well. Okay. Uh, the the other thing that this thing needs, the other resource that the oil well needs that we are not providing it uh, is of course power. But that is ridiculously easy to achieve now that we have everything so, uh, segmented off from each other. Uh, I'm going to take the conductive wire out and down this way. Uh, I'm trying to avoid having too much, too many wires in the in the air gap, the the space in between, because eventually this oil well will start releasing natural gas. I was kind of hoping it would show us here, but eventually it shows uh, it releases a bunch of natural gas when the back pressure each reaches 100. And that's what I'd like to uh, change this setup for. I want to have this uh, ready to go as a, oh, no, press the wrong thing, as a natural gas setup. So I'm going to, I'm just going to rip this down and we're going to set it another, in fact, I'm even, I'm even going to change the chamber and put it up here. Just realized that I don't know whether natural gas floats on top of sour gas or not. How can, how can we confirm or deny this? I mean, other than going to a creative world to find out, I'm not sure. Okay, did someone say creative mode? I have got a, bl a block of natural gas over here, kilogram per tile, and a bunch of sour gas over this side, kilogram per tile. I'm going to destroy this separating divide in between, and let's see what happens here. It looks immediately as if the sour gas is going to go upwards, but we'll, we'll just raise it up and see what happens. Uh, do you guys want to watch this? I should imagine you do want to watch this. I see a bit of a diagonal line starting to appear, so that that that's making me feel like the, the sour gas wants to go down and the natural gas wants to go up. Of course, the reason that I am testing these two gases in particular is I'm likely to be making sour gas from dropping crude oil, naphtha, petroleum on stuff that's too hot. And uh, natural gas is the is the gas that we're actually trying to uh, to siphon off here. And looking at it, I think, yes, natural gas does indeed float on top of sour gas. Hmm, I'm a little worried about this water here. This this might lead us to some troubles. Let's try and get everything out of there if we can. In fact, let's cancel this deconstruct and let's put some other tiles in there. Have we got just normal tiles kicking about? Something that's nice and easy to make. What have we got here? Sedimentary rock? All right, let's use that. Okay, water displacement is going on a good, and that's good. I, I would shudder to think what would happen if we dropped that much water into this space. I mean, instantly full of steam. Oh, it would be horrific. Absolutely horrific. So one thing I've just noticed is when those guys walked through this water, a whole bunch of it just flashed into steam. Look at this. Look at this. Why? Why did that do that? We've got like 100 degree sour gas on top. Maybe that's it. Ah, look at this. Look, look at this little unconductive wire here. All right, it's probably the one place we're going to have to come up and through. Ah, that's a, that's a little vexing. Oh, what's happened here? Oh, what's happening? I was just replacing the power wire down here. I was like, don't run a lead wire through there. You're going to have to put at least an iron one through. And then I saw this. Uh, well, I, I said it would be horrific if it happened. It is. Oh, it truly, truly is. <laughs> Okay, so the power has been hooked up and the oil well is now pumping. As you can see, liquids are coming down here, washing their way into our boiler area over here. The the door has closed because the temperature is dropping and they need to pass the uh, the temperature up and through. Look at that, a thousand degrees. What is its overheat temperature here? Let's go and find out. Melting point, three thousand degrees. No worries. We uh, like the the magma underneath isn't even that out that hot. Uh, and more importantly, this should now be introducing enough liquids into here that we can start. Yeah, already ninety. 
96 uh, that was uh, higher than the 95 we had. Just going to hope that there's enough coming in here to keep this pumping. Okay, talking of pumping, we wanted to try and make some sort of system here for dealing with the natural gas. If we just put that there, it will then have access to all of the tiles around it for sucking up the gases. Uh, and then I want to start doing some, some filtration. I want to first go the gas element pipe sensor. I want to have that there. We're going to get the an actual insulated pipe going up and across there. And this is going to be... Oh, no, this isn't where we want to dump it, is it? Where do we want to dump hot, sour gas? Okay, yeah, I'm going to go with here. This should probably work out a little bit better for us. If we get a gas vent coming in on that one, maybe even the high-pressure gas vent, but whatever, we'll go with that. And a gas pipe element sensor. We'll put those together there with a little bit of automation wire. And this is a nice um, powerless format of finding out, of uh, sorting out gases here. As you can see, the, uh, the, the sensor will pick up, in this case, sour gas, and immediately tell the gas vent after it to open up if it does have uh, detect that. Which I feel works out incredibly well. Also, we want to tell this when to turn on and off. So the thing that I'm going to be doing with that is finding a gas element sensor. There we go. And I want to put that down there. We're going to hook this up also with a little bit of automation wire. And this will be actually trying to detect for natural gas. The next plan is literally the inverse. And I'm not sure whether I'm going to want to put a space in between these or not. But I'm going to go for a gas element sensor. No, no, no. We want to go for the ventilation and the gas pipe element sensor. And pop this down here. And I also want to put a not gate in between. Because this time we're going to be seeing if there is anything that is not natural gas. Anything that is natural gas can just pass through. But if not, I want to pick it up. Now, the reason that this may or may not work is I don't know whether the not gate takes time to process or not. Does it just go bloop, straight away? Or does it actually take a second? Uh, do we do it? So the, if it takes a second, then we will actually miss the packet that it's trying to, to detect. Uh, and that, that would be rubbish. That, that would be pretty poor. I was about to be like, at this point, we're relatively confident that it's just natural gas, but I'm not. So we're gonna, gonna put a bridge up this way and then Oh, so quick save. Put a bridge up this way, grab ourselves another bit of insulated pipe, and then run that up and in there. So we can just run it through the filter and see if that works out or not. I was about to just run it up and drop it in with a uh, with a pipe up here, and then I was like, oh, this is not foolproof. This is not even slightly foolproof. Okay, we're at the point where it is literally just topping up the liquids here because as the liquids drop down here, more petroleum is being pushed through and it's pushing up. And very shortly, we should hopefully see 100 grams tick in. The door slams shut. Door, door slam shut. There we go. Beautiful, beautiful. And now we should just start cooling everything down as opposed to trying to pull the heat out of this door through the connected liquids as we were doing. Okay, I believe that to be all the moving parts in the system. Well, we can totally do a check of this if we just go and set this to steam rather than natural gas. If we go and do that, we should get a little bit of power going through. All right, beautiful, beautiful. Let's watch this get pumped in. I'm not that bothered until we see some steam coming through here. At that point, I become very bothered so it goes past the sour gas check no problem it then comes into here uh finds out that it is steam lets it out oh, oh, that is beautiful that that is exactly as we wanted it okay so let's put this back onto natural gas uh and hope at some point uh, in in four times the amount that we've just had well three another three uh we should hopefully see this turn on probably do with doing a few things like uh making this a little bit more permeable to uh to gases that that might work out incredibly well for us actually so I've just completed the research for Artificial Friends. This is something that I have not even looked at since he got updated. Yes, indeed, Sweepy. I'm going to just dump him down here. We're going to see what happens. Uh, I've never used one. All I know is that he stores liquids and solid material debris from the Sweepy. So, so when do we build a Sweepy? Where do we put the stuff from this? What happens to the stuff afterwards? I don't know. We'll find out. But I'm hoping that will help us keep this area a bit cleaner. Hmm, I didn't even think about a cooling solution for this. We are going to need one, aren't we? And we do have cold liquid right here. Like right here. I'm worried there will be too much, though, you know? All right, we're going to try it. We're going to try it. I mean, what, what what comes wrong from trying, right? What, what could go wrong from just trying? We all know it can break badly. 
Okay, here we go. The water's going round again. Going in at 9 degrees, coming out at 20. Ouch. <laughs> but that should be enough to keep it nice and cool. I don't think it's going to have any significant out uh, change on the output here. I mean, that, that'll bring the temperature down. It'll be fine. Yeah, all right, it's already gone too too hot. Let's deconstruct that and put a steel one in place. Wow, the temperature of this gas pump is just 45 and staying there. I'm going to assume that's because we're taking the temperature out enough. All right, beautiful, beautiful. More importantly, has this started raising up too high a temperature? Oh, oh, we're doing it, we're doing it. There is natural gas being released from here. Okay, well, this is where we find out, guys. This is where we find out what's going on. It hasn't even got up to 100%. Uh, that's, yeah, all right, cool, that's fine, that's fine. We did get to a little bit of a situation where we've not got enough water to be pumping into here, so maybe that's got something to do with it. Mad Frank going absolutely nuts there. Where is this natural gas going? Let's, let's press the F4. It does seem to be mostly making its way in there. The natural gas sensor doesn't appear to be doing its job. Uh, I, gu I guess it's because there's too much steam around. Does it tell me what it's detecting right now? It doesn't tell me what it's detecting. It does say that it is trying to find natural gas, though, so that's pretty good. Yeah, all right, maybe we need another mesh tile. Uh, let's get this. Another mesh tile up the top here. I really wanted to not put it right next to this gas vent, but all right, that's where we're at. Let's do it. Most definitely pumped about the amount of it that's going into here. All right, let's uh, let's extend this out a bit again, and let's see if we can get it to, to aid in the settlage rather than uh, do whatever it is it's doing right now. Oh, the pump's come on. The pump has come on. Let's, let's watch the flow. Okay, so natural gas goes, natural gas goes. What about this one? Ah, it's taken out. Beautiful. All right, exactly. Uh, for those of you that need to know, not gates, not gates switch instantly, which means we could actually just dump this up into there. It would save us power. It would save us a lot of power. I like saving a lot of power. Let's do it. Oh, oh, there he goes. It's it's, it's sweepy. What's he gonna do though? Where, where's he gonna go with all the all the stuff? That's what I want to know. Look at this petroleum crude oil. What is this? Ah displayed object. We get to display stuff on him. What does that do? So, for instance, I could put a bit of bleach stone on the back of him and he'd be spreading chlorine everywhere. Is, is that how that works? I'm not sure why you'd want to display anything else as well. Display the snazzy suit. Do it. <laughs> okay, so he's going around just picking up all the water. What's happening with the water? Where is it going? Like, cool, you're picking up water. Does it go into here? Is this the thing? Oh, no, but there's water. Does it get emptied? Deliver? Deliver? No, we've just got a bunch of deliveries. <laughs> ah, the water's splashing over somehow. Not sure how that's happening, but that's where the steam's coming from. Whilst it's cute watching him go around and pick up the water, I reckon we could probably do well by getting someone else to come and help him out, and then we'll watch him pick up other stuff. <laughs> oh, wow, look at his little animation. He's got a little little sponge that comes out, and he sucks it up, and then when he's trying to pick up items, there's a little, little animation underneath sucking all that up as well. Oh, that is, that is really cool. Like, super cool. I, I love that. I love that a lot. Also, I cannot get over how well this little power-free mechanism works for scrubbing this line clean of anything that's not natural gas. But I think with that, I am going to say thank you very much for joining me for this adventure, ladies and gentlemen. Today, we have gone around and we have fixed a whole bunch of problems that I had realized that we had. Most importantly, we have cleared all this place out of water here. And more importantly than that, we have put some temperature regulation on these aqua tuners. We also managed to get our, our oil biome turning over and being productive, as well as getting a brand new friend but i will see you next time when we're going to start trying to explore a bit more of the space biome and probably fixing a whole host of other things that have gone wrong without me realizing but i will see you then when we're gonna do that bye